All right. Well, everybody, welcome again. And this workshop is called Transitions, How to Deal with Ch Ch Changes Amidst COVID. So let's listen to this short audio clip to set the mood. different man now may change me but I can't trace time. Thank you David Bowie. All right well again welcome my name is Lynn Meetsy Bryzak and I am a faculty member in the counseling department at Glendale Community College. I've been a counselor for over 30 years working in community colleges universities, and a small liberal arts women's college, as well as the Cancer Support Community of Arizona. A little bit about me personally. My family transplanted to Phoenix from the Midwest when I was 10 years old. I attended six schools in five years before settling in at Xavier High School halfway through my sophomore year. I went on to earn a bachelor's degree in psychology from Santa Clara University, a master's in counseling from Arizona, Arizona State University, and many years later, a doctorate in education also from Arizona State University. I love working with people in transition, facilitating personal growth, goal achievement, and resilience in individuals and communities with grace and compassion is my mission. I also enjoy spending time with friends and family, cooking, hiking, and enjoying the great outdoors. This is a view of me in my at-home office, and um, that's where I'm sitting right now. And what I'm doing here at GCC this uh, semester is teaching actually the Introduction to Multiculturalism, CPD 160. I generally teach that alternately with the CPD 150, Strategies for College Success. I'm also the faculty advisor of a new club on campus, the Muslim Student Union. And then as all the counseling faculty, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions with students regarding personal career and academic issues. I've put my contact information there at the, in the bottom, and then you'll see it in the final slide as well if you want to reach me. You've already met my co-host, David Gherkin, who's going to be monitoring the chat and sharing his screen when appropriate. And as he mentioned, we'll have time for questions and comments at the end. So feel free to hold on to those and ask them as we get to that point. So transitions, they don't happen all at once. It's really about the process of change. And embedded in that process are challenges, which may lead to growth and opportunities for creativity. Well, how did we get to this current transitional space? a place that David Treadway and Psychotherapy Networker calls a place of fear and uncertainty. Well, Dr. Treadway says that the, it's a perfect storm of four different things. The first one being the invisible assault of this novel coronavirus. The second, the economic harm from the shutdown of businesses, travel, schools, etc. Third, the disproportionate impact of those first two on people of color. And then finally, the societal confusion about safety and openings or reopenings or closures, et cetera. So if transitions are about change, let's talk a little bit more about change. In David Bowie's audio clip that we listened to, he advises, turn and face the strange. Well, what's strange or different now? What do we have to face? Well, I'd suggest that work has become sort of strange because for many of us, work has moved to the home. For those who are still working, there are many different safety precautions, wearing personal protective equipment, 
being in an environment that that may feel unsafe to them. So there's a lot that has changed as far as work is concerned. School is another thing that has changed. Uh, for many, it has removed, it has moved to a remote environment. We have parents who never intended to homeschool, having to homeschool their children or at least help their children while they're trying to learn online. And then also most everything else we do, eating, shopping, socializing, all those things are primarily happening at home now. And a popular ideal that we have for home is that it's a haven. But with all these changes and all these things moving to the home, it seems like for many of us, it's become more of a hub and maybe the only environment that we operate in, which puts a lot of pressure on the home environment and the people within it. We have to consider, is home a safe and a comfortable place for us? Do you have the space, emotional, physical, psychological space you need to be able to focus on your goals? Perhaps you have younger siblings or children that you're caring for or more household chores that are um, created for you now that you're, so much is happening at home. And do you have the necessary tools to accomplish your tasks and goals? The tools that are allowing us to work, learn, shop, and socialize remotely revolve around technology. We have a greater need for technology and all of its accoutrements, the internet speed, bandwidth, all sorts of devices that we, that we might need, and often for multiple users that are occupying that same space. For example, my husband's a professor at ASU and he is in another room um, lecturing to his students on Zoom using a lot of bandwidth and has asked me if I would use the MiFi while he's doing that because sometimes his uh, internet, the internet gets shaky while he's on it if I'm also trying to do things. So I know that we're not the only ones that are having to, having to navigate those issues. At Glendale Community College, a lot of what has changed is the way our classes are delivered. Less than 20% of our classes were online before the pandemic. And now this semester, over 90% of our classes are being delivered remotely. And perhaps for you that are students, you used to come to campus, use the computers, or even for me as a faculty member, I was using the computer on campus. Uh, my poor computer at home is not quite as good as the computer at campus. Uh, but now that most everything's remote, you're having to figure out technology. Perhaps you borrowed a Chromebook from the college last semester and are still using that. Or maybe you're having to share a computer with multiple users, or maybe you've been lucky enough to get a new computer, but no matter what, all these technologies require some new skills and those skills, that learning those skills comes with a learning curve. So let's talk a little bit about how we learn, or at least about our mindset about our abilities as relates to learning. Mindset is how we think about an aspect of ourselves. And intelligence is one of the most common aspects that has been studied. A person's current mindset can be measured by a simple statement. Consider your agreement with this statement. Your intelligence is something about you that you can't change very much. Do you strongly agree, agree, mostly agree, mostly disagree, disagree, or strongly disagree? I'm going to post a, a poll here and ask you to respond to that. Oops, let me, I actually have to redo my poll because I had relaunched the poll. There we go. Let me try that again. There we go. So the question shows up there again in the poll. Those same answers might look a little bit different, but if you would go ahead and answer that poll, I would appreciate it.
Looks like we're getting some answers. Great, thank you very much. Looks like a few more, few people haven't voted, but I'll wait another moment. That might be everybody that's gonna vote today. So let's end the poll and look at those results. So it looks like the most majority of people responded five, which is in the mostly dis the disagree end, four, five, or six. Uh, but I wanna first look at the one, two, or three. So the one, two, or three, we just have a few that are in there. If you chose one of those, you'd have what's called a fixed mindset about intelligence. Now, unfortunately, that creates barriers to learning. But fortunately, mindset is malleable. It can be changed. So for the rest of you that chose mostly to strongly disagree, four, five, or six, you have what's considered a growth mindset. Dr. Carol Dweck popularized the concept of growth mindset. Her research and that of others shows that abilities can be cultivated. A lot of her research started working with middle school girls in math because it's about that age that girls stop engaging very much in math. And let me get rid of that, that they start and they stop engaging much in math because they have this idea that they can't learn math. They have a fixed mindset for many of them. But what Dr. Dweck found as she worked with these girls and with their teachers is that we can change, learn, and grow with focused effort. Effort is a positive, constructive force. So you might picture your brain building new connections. Think of those middle schoolers working at their math problems, those girls that continue to exert effort continued learning their arithmetic and then their uh, algebra and then their geometry and their calculus. They kept engaging in that effort and they would get better at it as they did. The girls that had the fixed mindset that didn't think that they could get any better with effort, um, their scores never increased. So let's examine the consider the different mindsets. You have this Calvin and Hobbes comic where Calvin walks in and Susie's sitting down and she says, what happened to you? He looks pretty beat up and he says, Hobbes and I had a frank exchange of ideas. And he asks Susie, what are you doing, homework? She replies, I wasn't sure I understood this chapter. So I reviewed my notes from the last chapter and now I'm rereading this. Calvin says, you do all that work? And she responds, well, now I understand it. And he's walking away saying, huh, I used to think you were smart. So now I'll invite you to write into the chat which one you think has the fixed mindset and which character you think has the growth mindset. The spiky hair is Calvin. The other one is Susie. And if you haven't yet, be sure to close your poll window so you can see the cartoon. Thank you. So the way I, we have this set up, I was having trouble going back and forth to chat, which is why Dr. Gherkin is, is monitoring the chat for us. Has anybody posted anything? Four or five okay. coming in. Okay, great. Is there a consensus? It looks like most of them are saying Susie has a growth mindset and Calvin has a fixed mindset. Yes, great, you are right, yes. Susie has the growth mindset. It's she's exerting effort, which is a positive constructive force. She is building new connections in her brain. Part of that constructive force also includes failures and mistakes, which provide building opportunities. 
Another aspect of people with growth mindset is that they will seek and use constructive criticism. So I'll share an experience of myself where I had a fixed mindset and I was eventually able to adopt a growth mindset, or let's say I'm in the process of adopting, adopting a growth mindset. So technology, I, I consider myself a bit of a technophobe. As I said in my introduction, I like running, hiking, biking, cooking, computer is not involved in any of those things. So I'm not all that keen on sitting in front of a computer and learning new technology. I just don't think I'm good at it. So I've, I've traditionally not done a lot with it, except when I've had to. Well, with this COVID and having to learn how to engage with my colleagues other than face-to-face, -face, engage with my students in online teaching, I've been faced with the need of learning some technology, which has actually grown into some excitement as I have attempted new technology, as I've seen others doing some cool things like screencast-o-matic videos and establishing YouTube channels and and videoing themselves and sending announcements to their students every week. So that, I got excited for that. I started trying that. I was exerting effort, spending lots of hours, making mistakes, seeking feedback. And now I, I enjoy learning new things. And, and some of my colleagues even think of me as, as technologically savvy. And my students, I am uh, doing video announcements to them every other week and, and um, Padlet and Flipgrid and some other things. So, so I think I've adopted a growth mindset. And according to Carol Dweck and the research, a, really, a growth mindset is pretty easy to induce when you think about building those connections. So your homework, I realize this isn't a class and you really don't even have to do it because I can't check up on you, but I'm gonna challenge you to sometime today, tell somebody about growth mindset and about how effort is a constructive force and it allows you to build new connections in your brain, either perhaps with math or technology as in my case, maybe you know somebody trying to learn to ride a bike, maybe you are um, needing to take the bus and you're afraid to take the bus or you know somebody that's trying to do that so they're trying to learn how to do that. So I encourage you to explain to them the power of yet. And that yet is that they may not have it yet, but if they push through the tough stuff, learn from their mistakes, focus their efforts, and seek feedback, they'll get there. And maybe you even want to share this little um, image with them of the brain working out and building new connections. So this transitions workshop is about some strategies too. I wanna to share some strategies with you that you might be able to use in dealing with transitions. We've already talked about one, this idea about growth mindset. You may not have it yet, but with effort you can build and learn. A couple of others that we're gonna address. We're gonna look at some past challenges and lessons learned from them. I'm gonna introduce you to a little bit of emotional intelligence, the four aspects of emotional intelligence. I'm going to introduce you to a three-step process of making requests. And we're also going to talk a little bit about interdependence. So let's start, oh boy, sorry, this is something. <laughs> Just a second, let me turn off my audio. This would be a good time for a commercial, if I had one. I'm sure Dr. Bryce will be right back as soon as she takes care of her little, little dog, Peaches. One of the occupational hazards of uh, working at home. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Gherkin, for stepping in there. So um, I'm not even sure if he was able to mention to you that um, we have a, oh, somebody else has their dog. Thank you. <laughs> um, that, that in the chat, we're posting a link to a Padlet. And I invite you to write on that Padlet some of the challenging transitions that you have encountered recently. 
So please take a moment and, and write on the Padlet. And there's a little pink, um, yep, you guys are getting it, great. So I see there's things about kids, things about classes, things about Zoom. Having to find a new job, not being able to see friends. teaching to a sea of black screens. What I'm seeing in the chat is adjusting to online and another mm -hmm. one doing a group project. I'm not sure if those are in the oh, okay. Padlet as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, transitioning into online school as a freshman in college, I really feel for for folks too. And then that means that might mean that senior year of high school was a very different experience than you might have expected. Great, I appreciate that. You'll have that link. Oh, people are still writing, excellent. Okay, well, I think we'll move on back with the PowerPoint. So David, Shall I share my screen? Okay, I'll share my screen. All right, so you've written about some of the challenging transitions you've encountered recently. I appreciate that. And I noticed that some were academic, some were non-academic, some were family, personal, um, I'd like to share with you a relatively recent non-COVID, non-academic challenge with you. So in the summer of 2018, I was diagnosed with cancer. It's a type of blood or lymph cancer called lymphoma. And actually both of my sisters had had it. One, one like 30 years earlier, one 15 years earlier, and they had their chemo and radiation, got through it. So I had that to, um, to support me. I wasn't looking forward to it, it was a big challenge, but, but I knew that it could be gotten through. And this first picture is a picture of me in the fall of 2018 in the chemo room for one of my chemo sessions and my friend Lynn was visiting me who had shaved her head in solidarity with me. And I went through four months of chemotherapy. And then at the end of that, we found that the cancer had grown while on chemotherapy. That's not the news you wanna get. That wasn't the way it worked for my sisters. And so I had to talk with my oncologist so that we could figure out, well, what was the next step? The next step that she suggested didn't sound at all appealing to me. So I sought some other opinions and everybody was saying the same thing. They were all saying that I needed to get something called, that used to be called a bone marrow transplant. You might've heard of it called that way. And now it's called a stem cell rescue, high dose chemotherapy with stem cell rescue. And what they do is they zap you with some more chemo to try to clean out your system. And then they um, 
remove your stem cells and they have to get just the immature stem cells. So this is me in the summer of 2019 in the hospital where after they've promoted the growth of my stem cells so that they leak out of the bone marrow, then they harvest them. And they, as I was saying, they keep just the immature ones, put the mature ones back in me. They freeze the immature ones. And this whole process, there's a little bit more to it, but, but as I was anticipating this process, I was hearing that the results from it were mixed, depending on who I talked to, maybe a 50 to 80% chance of it's getting rid of the cancer. Potential for a lot of long-term side effects. None of this was at all um, appealing to me. It was I did not want to accept this challenge. But as you can see, I finally decided to accept it and then um, had some more radiation and then was back in the hospital where they zapped me with the strongest chemo they could. And then they put those immature stem cells back in me in the hope that they would grow in a cancer-free environment and mature in that environment and that the environment would stay cancer-free. And this is me in the summer of 2020. And I am, at this point, there's no evidence of disease. This is me with my husband and Peaches, whom you heard barking earlier. And so this challenge was something that I did have to work through and I learned some lessons from it. Some of the lessons that I learned from that are, one was to be able to know and manage and express my emotions. Another one was to be able to make requests. And another one was to practice interdependence, to realize that I couldn't do everything on my own. And those are the lessons that I want to share with you. And we're going to start with that emotion one. For those of you that have taken CBD 150, the strategies for college success, and I'm sure with many other courses, you may recognize this concept of emotional intelligence. It's the first part of it is being able to know and name your emotions. So this wheel has six different foundational emotions. And as you can see, there are nuances of each of those. So there's lots and lots of emotions that people might feel. And I just want to, to uh, let you know, in case you don't, that all feelings are valid and valuable. All of those feelings, sad, angry, scared, tender, each one of those feelings is valuable. And actually research, especially that's being done on cancer patients, done with cancer patients, shows that experiencing and expressing a full range of emotions leads to better health outcomes. So again, with cancer patients, people sometimes say, oh, you just have to be positive. It's all going to work out. Well, that doesn't, the research does not bear that out. And the same with dealing with whatever transitions you might be dealing with. It's okay to be angry, to be scared, to be excited, to be sad. All of those feelings are valuable and experiencing the full range of them is really going to be better for your health in the long run. This idea of emotional intelligence is so important that employers look for that in their employees. And they often put that above whether the employee has the skill that they want because they figure we can teach you that skill, but it's a bit harder to teach you how to get along with people and to teach you to be able to know and name your feelings. So for me, I journaled my feelings. So you have to know how to manage those. It's great to know and name them, but then what do you do with them once you have them? Well, you have to be able to manage them. In my case, as I said, I joined a blog called Caring Bridge where people that have health issues can journal and then post that journal so that you don't have lots of people asking you, how are you doing, how are you doing? They can go to that one site and they can find it. For me, it allowed me to develop clarity and it gave me an outlet, this semi-public way of being able to share what was going on, which also allowed me to create support. And because of this pandemic, this, this 
um, transition that we're in right now, many of us are probably dealing with some other kinds of strong feelings. One might be a feeling of disappointment about things that aren't able to happen. As I mentioned earlier, the, the person that's a freshman in college, if, if last year they were a senior in high school, they might have been very disappointed about some of the things that maybe didn't happen your senior year. Um, weddings that are having to be greatly restricted because of the health hazards of many people in a space. Um, you might have disappointments over having to cancel travel plans that you've had for a long time. Um, so I understand that there are big emotions that are going on, finding a way to manage them, finding an outlet for them that's a healthy outlet is really important. Maybe one of your frustrations is that you can't submit an assignment through Canvas. You've tried, 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 you can't do it. You might want to throw up your hands, blame or quit, um, but that maybe is not the best way to manage it. I'd suggest that instead, think for a moment about the other person. In that case, think about your professor who might be overwhelmed with moving her course to all online and realize that that instructor might be learning too. So assume the best in her, assume the best in anyone with whom you have conflict. And that allows us to manage those relationships with respect and grace. So in that case with the Canvas assignment, one way to manage that relationship, instead of writing nasty notes about your professor and ask my professor or telling everybody what a horrible teacher they are, you might instead um, alert the instructor to the situation. And if she's like me, maybe she just forgot to open the submissions. So the emotional intelligence key to personal, to work life, to uh, school life, to be able to know your feelings, have some sense of how others might be feeling, and then be able to manage them in yourself and with others. And that leads, I think, to this idea of making requests. It's sort of another way of managing our relationships. There's probably a lot of unexpected things that have been happening for you in the midst of COVID. One might be without the face-to-face -face contact where you usually have, that you usually have at school or at work or wherever. We don't have the same opportunity for casual conversations to happen that can lead to questions and ways of, of understanding something and knowing what to do. You, you as a student or even as a worker may have to take more initiative to have your needs met. Let's say you've missed an assignment. Maybe you had to work extra chefs, shifts to cover family expenses because somebody else can't work. Or maybe you have to help a child or a younger sibling with schoolwork. Well, I suggest don't fret, stew, or blame. Don't wait until, it, until it's too late. Make a request. So I'm going to introduce this three-step process to you for how to make a request respectfully. So the first step is to offer some context, some information, not excuses, but information. Uh, I worked an extra shift because I needed the money to cover family expenses. I needed to help my child with their homework because they weren't getting it. So I missed this assignment that was due. So you're just offering information. And then the second step is to be specific about what you're wanting. Now that takes some preparation to think that through. What it is, what it, is it that you are asking for? Maybe what you're asking for is um, an extension. And then again, be specific. May I have until next Wednesday to turn in this assignment? Or may I uh, do some extra credit to be able to try to make up for the points that I missed for that assignment? So be as specific as you can. That's gonna take some preparation on your part to think through what it is that you might need, what kind of request you're trying to make. And then thirdly, express gratitude. This person of whom you're making this request does not have to agree to, their, to your request. They have every right to say, no, I'm sorry, that doesn't work. But you're expressing gratitude 
sets the stage for a good working relationship. Because after all, that's that's why we that's why we're here. I think is to be able to work together. And I think Eric Erickson says it really well when he says, "Life doesn't make any sense without interdependence. We need each other, and the sooner we learn that, the better for us all." So, referring back to my cancer experience, I didn't want to do all that yucky stuff. I didn't want to be in the hospital for weeks and confined at home for months. Um, I didn't want to have things put in me that didn't seem like they were going to do nice things to me. Um, but I finally realized that we had a common goal. The healthcare providers, my family who was encouraging me to do this, we, our goal was to restore my health. And when I realized that, it made it a bit easier to do the yucky stuff. Um, with school too, let's consider the common goal that we have. You might be having to do some things that you really don't like right now. You don't like the transitions that have happened, the new ways that you're having to do things. Maybe you're the kind of person that learns much better when you're face to face with somebody in this, this, or you teach much better. This looking at these black screens is really, is really getting to you. Well, let's, let's think about that common goal that we have. We're doing this for the safety of everyone. And because we want you, the student, to continue to make progress towards accomplishing your goals. Now, sometimes we realize we're working together and we can make a beautiful picture out of that because we are working together as a team. I, I think of um, tutors and mentors and instructors and students. Together, we're building this picture. We're cogs in a wheel. We're, we're together. We know that we're helping each other out. And so we're, we're hopefully willing to do our part. But sometimes we have to do our part even when we don't know that it's helping. Like this bee that's just, just surviving. Um, yet while it's surviving and getting what it needs to survive, it's pollinating plants that then produce fruit and vegetables that humans harvest and eat to sustain their lives. So, so long as we recognize this idea of interdependence and that we each have a part to play and that we each need to play our part for the survival of everyone and the common good, I think that may make it easier to do the things that seem so difficult. So let's consider what we've just talked about. So this pandemic has had a big impact on all of us. Disproportionate impact on some, yes, but a big impact on all of us. I invite you to discover your lessons learned from the challenges and changes you've had to adapt to. You've had to adapt to. And I encourage you to practice practice adopting a growth mindset. Realize the power of yet and the power of effort in building connections. Practice developing your emotional intelligence, acknowledging your feelings, knowing your feelings, studying what are the names of different feelings because you're not even sure what to call it. Um, and I have resources at the end that can help with that. And being able to, to practice being aware of what other people might feel and then to manage those encounters with grace and compassion. Practice making requests. Put the effort in to provide some information, not an excuse, but information to consider what it is that you want to ask for and then realize that the other person has the option of saying yes or no. And practice this idea of interdependence, recognizing, believing, knowing that we are all dependent on each other. And that if we work together for the common good, then that can help each and every one of us. So I hope in this presentation that you've either been introduced to something new or maybe you have reinforced things that you already knew. In this educational endeavor that we're all engaged in, learning is such an important part. And I'd like to play, or at least have Dr. Gherkin play, this pandemic-inspired 
parody of the Proclaimer's song, 500 Miles for You. I think the musician's take on the pandemic and learning is humorous and worth listening to. When I wake up, well, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be here stuck inside this house with you. I can't go out, but I've got a lot of things, a lot of things that I could teach myself to do. Kids need a haircut, well, I guess that I could try and be the dad who gives a haircut to his kids. I'll learn a language. Cause it's among the many things, the many things that I have on my bucket list Cause I can't fly 500 miles, no, I can't walk outside my door No, I will learn 1,000 things, and I will learn 1,000 more I started sewing, so if you're running out of clothes Just let me know, I'll make a sweater just for you I'm learning trumpet, I can only play one song, I play it wrong, but I will practice and get good. And now I garden, because I bought a lot of seeds, so many seeds that I will grow some food for you. And I'm a cook now, I'm collecting recipes from all my friends who post their dinner on Facebook. Cause I can't fly 500 miles No, I can't walk outside my door So I will learn 1,000 things And I will learn 1,000 more Cause I'm inside, I'm inside I'm done driving, done driving to my work Get inside, get inside Don't spread the virus, please don't be a jerk Cause we can't fly 500 miles No, we should all just stay indoors We could learn 1,000 things We could learn 1,000 more Go learn something new today. the wrong thing. Let's get back to that. This. Okay, doke. So I think he had a little growth mindset, emotional intelligence, interdependence. He had a lot of that in there. I hope you enjoyed that. So realize, please, that this was just the first of our fall series of counseling workshops today. And I encourage you to attend future presentations. We have one a week for the next six weeks. And you can go to our website for a complete list, but I've listed the next two here. What's your purpose is gonna be next Tuesday. And then choosing a career will be the following Wednesday. And now I'd like to take any questions or comments that you might have. So we invite you to use the chat. David Gerken will moderate that chat. He'll read aloud the questions so that I can respond. And if you'd have a question that you'd prefer to just send to me, my email contact will be on the next slide too. But please feel free to, um, to chat with us. Don't see a question yet, but I see a comment that says the video was great and funny. Oh, good. I'm <laughs> glad. I see a thank you for this workshop. Have a great day. I do have the references in the next slide, and then I will post that PDF in the chat. So if you're thinking of going and you want that, those resources just hang in there. Here's another one. I love the video too. Appreciate your time and information. And another one, very informative. Thank you for the workshop. 
And a special thanks to Dr. Mitzi Brizak and Dr. Gherkin. Mm -hmm. Another one, I love the growth mindset info rings true. Mm -hmm. Thank you, this was very informal. Thank you for this workshop. And from a professor, one that's too long for me to read before it goes by, but it's important for students to feel comfortable letting their professors know of any issues they're encountering during the semester so that their instructors can help. Thank you for covering that. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Another one, as a presidential scholar here at GCC, what kind of proof can I use to validate my being here? Also, the presentation was fun. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you for asking that question. Um, we, if you would put your, if you would just say, what did we decide, David? Just say um, extra credit or put president scholar in the chat and then we'll be saving that chat and we can verify your attendance that way. But you've already put your name in the chat, so we have it. In this workshop late but still had fun. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day. Okay. How do I show my proof as being a part of the President Scholar Program as well? Well, that's we have your name and we have that question, so we'll be able to verify that as well. Another big thank you. Well, great. Well, I'm going to show the resources then. Um, just a reminder that all the colleges, in case somebody came from one of the other colleges, all of the Maricopa colleges have a counseling department. So feel free to, um, to check that out. I have GCCs listed here, um, a link to it. And this, these slides will be available, as I said, in the chat. Um, consider taking a CPD or a BHS course. Consider making a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a counselor if you'd like to talk about any more of those things, the emotional intelligence or the growth mindset, making requests, interdependence. We'd be happy to help with any of those. And then some of the other resources that I used to gather information for this. If you want to know more about emotional intelligence on your own, there's a link for that. Um, the JED Foundation is a great website, uh, Preventing Suicide in Young Adults. And the Learner Lab is a great growth mindset. I also have the entire lyrics for David Bowie's changes, if you want to check that out. And then my email is at the bottom. If you, if you want to follow up with something with me, I would be happy to hear from you. So if we have no other questions then or comments, I just want to thank you all for sharing this time with me today, with us today. Thank you for putting up with Peaches. She was protecting us earlier, wanted to come back in, but I didn't let her back in this time. So I appreciate your time. If there's anything that, that I can do to help you with anything, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to be available. Before we wrap up, Dr. Brysak, I mm, noticed there's yes. a couple more comments and questions. Oh, good, yes. Thank you for the workshop. Like the Calvin and Hobbes strip. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you guys a question about the volunteering for the honors program? I'm very confused for when it is due, and I don't know who to contact about it. Ah, hmm. I am not sure. Do you, does anybody know? Uh, when it's due. So I'm not sure I would... If anybody else knows it's listening, um, I just posted the slides while, while we're thinking of that. I just posted the slides in the chat and then somebody asked, where can we find the recording? I forgot to mention that it's going to be in that same, at that same link where we had the workshops listed. That's where we'll be posting the recordings of these workshops. So it's on our GCC homepage. Give us about a week for that so that we can um, get that in there. We're going to need some help from marketing to do that. Um, and then I don't know, uh, we have your name, we'll verify about the Presidential scho Scholar. Yeah, we will do that. We will take care of that because we have your names and we have everyone who asked that and said they were a Presidential Scholar. I saw about three of those. We, ha we will okay. have that captured and saved in the chat and we'll be able to verify that um, yes yeah, so if great so if you are a scholar don't then make sure you put that in the chat so we know to let them know
All right. Found the yeah. music video inspiring to learn something new. Ah, yes, good. Good. Learn how to knit, play the trumpet. As far as finding the recording, if you go to the GCC website and then probably just search on counseling, it'd be the easiest way to find the counseling website within the GCC website. And then within that, you'll see a link on the left saying workshops and it'll list the upcoming workshops, but next to the ones that have been completed, we'll have a link to the recording. Okay. Great. Thank you, Crystal, for putting some more information in there about Honor Scholar. Yes, so everybody stay safe. Thank you, Jason. Stay safe. And again, please reach out. We're doing counseling remotely, like everything else. So we can do phone counseling or video chat counseling. So if you want to pursue that, um, again, like Dr. Gerken said, search for counseling or email me or go to that website that we posted. You can ask when you call the number for counseling, you can ask for Dr. Brysak or Dr. Gherkin or one of the other eight counselors, most of whom will be doing a workshop following up here in the next weeks through November. Yep, so you get the chance. So it's a good way to see if you like the sound of the person's voice, the uh, <laughs> personality. Um, you know, you might say, that Dr. Gherkin looks like a weirdo, but I like that Dr. Brysak. I want to go see her. <laughs> or you might say, hey, this... Uh, all these other counselors, you get a, send, a chance to see us all and hear us presenting. That's a good way to uh, get a sense of who you might like to talk to as a counselor as well. It's important to feel like you have a good connection when you're yeah. meeting with a counselor. Yeah. Great. Well, we, I think that's it then. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Really appreciate it. Stay safe, take care, and stay in touch. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, Phil was there? Hmm. Ah, sweet. Thank you for the comments, everybody, and for the support. That was very nice. So, David, oh, did we stop recording? No, we're still recording. No, and we still have uh, four participants as well as us. Yes. So, let me stop the recording. Okay.